Hey, what's going on? Welcome back to Iron Anchor Cycles. We've got a 2022 Lowrider S here on the workbench and we are gonna take this bike from pretty stock to pretty rad. We've got motor work to do, we've got a pipe to go on, we've got handlebars, gauge relocation, whole bunch of really good stuff. Um, I'm just gonna dig right in and get going with this. We've done a bunch of uh, road glide STs so far. Still no Lowrider STs, but 2022 Lowrider S. Um, we're, gonna, we're gonna make some moves on it. Uh, I'm excited to see what this 117 motor is going to do with a cam in it. We're going to get it on the dyno. We'll show you those results. We've got a great air cleaner to go on. Obviously, we're doing an HPI pipe. What else would we do? Um, and then for the bars and risers, you probably guess what we're going to do there. That's going to be from Krauss. So, got a couple other little details to go in addition to that, but I'm going to do a little less talking, a little bit more working, and get to tearing into this bike, and uh, we'll show you guys how this goes. Okay, so like that, we just get our air cleaner and pipes out of the way, put those aside for the customer to come and pick up or maybe throw in a dumpster when he gets here. Um, we've got the bike exposed and we're ready to get going with what we're gonna do. So from here, this is uh, very straightforward. We're gonna start tackling the cam chest. Um, if you're interested in seeing the full step-by-step -step on how to do a uh, cam for an M8, we've got another video that goes very, very detailed step-by-step through all of it. Um, but in this case, I'm just gonna go through, um, let you watch a little bit and see how it goes. Uh, but basically from here, once we do that initial sort of disassembly, we've got a plug on each side, or I'm sorry, a plug in each head taken out on the other side so that we'll be able to turn the motor using the rear wheel. We've also got the bike jacked up. Right now, obviously the bike's in neutral. Uh, in order to turn the motor over, we'll kick it up into sixth gear and then we can turn the motor by turning the rear wheel. Pretty straightforward. So from here, I'm gonna open up the cam chest. We're gonna let some of this oil come out. Uh, from there, we're going to go to removing the push rods, and uh, then we'll just start getting all the other components out, sort of one step at a time. Um, in addition to that, I didn't mention uh, a little earlier, one of the other parts we're going to do while we've got everything apart is a Trask transmission top cover. I don't think I've shown doing one of these on a soft tail yet. I think we did one on a bagger. Um, it's a little different on the soft tails just because there's a little less space. The baggers are actually quite easy. You can do it without taking the pipe off in most cases. Uh, but on the soft tails, almost inevitably, you will have to have the pipe off uh, in order to get this, this cover on or off. So um, maybe I'll go a little more step by step and in depth on that. Maybe we'll cut it into another video. We'll see what happens. But in any event, I'm going to keep kind of plugging along here. And uh, like I said, the next step is going to be getting into the camp chest. So I'm going to start doing that now. So I just went to go check the camera and it looked like it had frozen. I'm not sure how much footage we just lost there or maybe we missed all of it, really don't know. I guess we'll find out when we go and uh, edit this stuff on the computer. Um, but where I left off was we just got everything kind of stripped out here um, in the cam chest. We had done the push rods, we cut those out, took out the tappet blocks, took out the cuffs, took out the lifters. Then we came down, took out the chain tensioner, the sprockets and chain assembly, the cam plate, the oil pump, and just sort of wiped everything down. So. Basically, we're here just looking at sort of the empty cam chest, obviously, and at this point um, is when we'd start to check everything out and start to put the new parts in. 
So before we do that, um, I'm gonna take a step back and just make sure that we've got everything we need to keep going. Um, one thing we're doing on this bike, uh, which is a little different I think than the last M8 cam I did, um, this is obviously a 2022, so it has the oil pump and cam plate from Harley, particularly the oil pump uh, that started in the 20 models with the rear seal on them uh, in the fifth iteration of the oil pump that actually works very, very well and really uh, can stand up to the job of uh, just a bolt-in cam. So um, we really kind of give customers the option for the late model uh, M8s, 2020 and up, if they want to do the cam plate and oil pump, um, you know, from s s or from fueling as an alternative, um, we have that option, but if you want to, uh, if you're just doing bolt-in stuff and you want to retain the stock oil pump and cam plate and save a couple bucks doing that, um, on a mild build, it works really well and we'll stand up to it. So, uh, that's what we're doing in this case. So the oil pump and cam plate are going to go back in. Um, we've got new lifters, new, uh, billet lifter cuffs from s s along with, uh, black tappet blocks, black pushrod tubes and s s quickie pushrods all to go in here. So... All that sort of combination of new parts and old parts uh, should work very, very well and stand up to everything we're going to throw at it with this bike. So uh, from here, um, we're going to go ahead and, like I said, just kind of get all our parts together and start to put this back together. I will uh, show you kind of the cam going in, cam plate, all that stuff, and then we'll just sort of work our way from the bottom up and uh, just basically do the reverse of what we just did. Uh, just take everything we took out, replace new parts, put it all in. So I'm gonna continue from there and I'll keep rolling. All right, so we've got our oil pump back in, which obviously we did after we changed out the uh, inner cam bearing there and also checked our run out on the pinion shaft. We were just under 5 thousandths of run out, which is pretty much the limit for what you want. Um, uh, most of the new Harley cranks we're seeing are coming in at just about that. Some of them are a little bit better. Um, fortunately, we haven't seen too many that are worse. So like I said, oil pump in with a new seal, uh, new O-ring behind it, new bearing. Uh, now we're gonna go ahead and put the 475 cam in. Got that assembly lubed up, got some assembly lube in that inner cam bearing as well. And so I'm just gonna go ahead and slide this guy in. And now the next step is gonna be to uh, just go ahead and get that uh, original cam plate back on there. We've got an O-ring here uh, for the cam plate that goes behind it between the cam plate and the case. And then we just pop that on. Um, Pretty straightforward in terms of the installation, right? So we're just gonna keep humming along here. Uh, just wanna make sure obviously you take all the stuff apart, make sure everything's clean, put it back together, new O-rings, new seals, all that good stuff. So I'm gonna keep chugging along and uh, we'll check back in. Cam plate and the oil pump secured in place following the uh, torque stepping and motor turning instructions that, that us and us will give you or whoever if you're using somebody else's stuff. Uh, next thing we're gonna do is check to make sure that the thrust washer here is still the correct thickness. Uh, you're gonna wanna check that anytime you're changing any of the components in here. So basically what we're gonna do is put the uh, two sprockets on without the chain and we're gonna check the offset between them and make sure that's in spec uh, if it is. We'll uh, take it apart, put the chain on and keep going. If it's not, we will replace this uh, washer with the correct thickness. So go ahead and uh, do that and uh, we'll see what we come up with.
Okay, so with the cam chest back together, uh, we've got our obviously our sprockets back on, chain and tension are all in place. Uh, the first spacer we had was a little bit too small, so we went up by one size, I believe it was a 110 to a 120. Um, that's fairly common uh, to, to go have to go up one on these motors, uh, just what I've found. Uh, so anyway, our next step is we're gonna go ahead and start to do the lifters. Um, we did a couple of things before we got started. Number one is we checked our lifter bore uh, diameter, or I should say lifter bore size compared to our new lifters to make sure that we're in spec and don't need oversized lifters, which is the case sometimes. Um, the other thing we did obviously here is we use this tool from gyms to bleed the air out of the lifters uh, so that when we put them in, they're uh, fully pumped up with oil. So what we're gonna do is put a little assembly lube into each of the bores. We're gonna slide the lifters in. We're gonna put these SNS and um, billet aluminum tappet cuffs on. Obviously what we're doing here is replacing these plastic junkers uh, that come in there from the factory. So we'll get rid of these. We'll put these aluminum guys in. Um, just a quick note, um, you can follow, you know, the instructions that come with this if you're doing it yourself. You just gotta make sure that you use a feeler gauge to set these things correctly. They have a little bit of play in them and you gotta use a feeler gauge to get them centered around the lifters so they don't hang up or bind. So, all that said, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get these guys all put in and uh, then we'll get to doing the push rods and we'll get this buttoned up. Okay, so uh, cuffs in, tappet blocks on, obviously we got our gaskets under there. Uh, so now we're just gonna keep trucking along and get to putting the new push rods in. So we've got those set up and ready to go. And uh, I'm just gonna go grab those and we'll start putting them in one at a time. Obviously we're gonna do one cylinder um, with the cylinder at top dead center. We're gonna wait for the lifters to bleed down before we turn the motor over. Then we'll go ahead and we'll do the other cylinder, same thing, and then we'll get this buttoned up. So the push rod's fully in. Uh, obviously we did the rear first and then we went ahead and let those bleed down, waited 30 minutes, turned the motor over, did the front, and now we're waiting for those to bleed down. In the meantime, I'm gonna do the transmission top cover. What I like to do before I put the cam chest cover on is wait for these to bleed down and then turn the motor over a couple of times with everything done. We'll add a little more assembly lube and just make sure everything's moving smoothly, there's no binding, there's no issues. Just one last fail safe check before we button it up. So what I did over here, I just went ahead and took the transmission top cover off and I've got the Trask vented cover to go on. We took the vent that's from the original cover, put it into the Trask cover for the transmission. Um, obviously, if you haven't seen one of these before, you've got three sections under here. One section is uh, basically your, your shifter cam assembly. Your next section over in the middle is the transmission and then your third section and this is the the key this one closest to the uh, cam side of the motor this is a vent there or a, a port i guess straight down to your oil tank so 
by putting in a vent here, which is gonna connect to this fitting and then ultimately to the tube and little uh, K&N filter element, you'll be able to vent the crankcase and not worry about any oil coming out or anything like that because it's the highest point in the system and then it just goes up from there. So uh, with this um, assembled, with this on here, we can go ahead and put it in place. Obviously, we also cleaned off the top of the case to get any residue off of there. So that's there, and we've got six bolts. We're just gonna put some Loctite on them and put them on. Real simple, that's all it is. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that, and then we'll get back to the cam chest. All right, transmission top covers in. We've got our line routed filter up here above the throttle body. Turn the motor over, added a little more assembly lube. Everything feels real good, real smooth. So we are gonna go ahead and put the cam cover back on. Real simple, just uh, follow the torque sequence and you'll be good to go. All right, so cam cover's back on. Like I said, everything else here is pretty much buttoned up now. Um, with this all kind of in place, I'm gonna call it a night because it is about 90 degrees in the shop and it's about nine o'clock and I'm ready to get the hell out of here. So I'm gonna clean this all up. We're gonna get started back on this tomorrow, which is gonna be in about two seconds for all you. And uh, we will continue with doing uh, our pipe. We've got an air cleaner and we've got a whole bunch more to do on this after we get the uh, engine stuff done. We've got bars and risers and all that good stuff too. And then what we're all I'm sure waiting for, myself included, is getting this bike on the dyno and seeing what it's gonna do. I'm excited to see the 117 HPI pipe SNS 475 combo. I'm pretty sure it's gonna rip. So uh, stick around and uh, we'll be back. All right, I'm not sure where we left off with this 2022 Lowrider S. Uh, it's been a couple of days. Uh, I know I think I said in the last segment of the video I was gonna stop for the day and get back at it the following day. Uh, we just had a whole bunch of other stuff we had to take care of, so did all that. Now we're back to this bike. We've got all the parts and we're ready to go. Um, I'm pretty sure where we left off, we had just gotten the motor done. Um, to put in that 475 cam in and uh, just getting ready to put the pipe on, which we're waiting to do the bars to do first. So we're gonna do that now. So gonna walk over here obviously what we've got here is still all the stock set up here first thing we're gonna do is just get all this stuff removed um, we've got to get our clutch off brake line bars wiring gauge fairing comes off we get all that stuff torn down we'll take a look at where we're at and then we'll see what the parts are that we've got to go on here which are uh, all pretty awesome Okay, so just a couple minutes later, we've got the disassembly on the bike done, and I'm over on the workbench to get started on assembling the new handlebars and all the other stuff we got. So figured I'd show you what we've got, and uh, we'll show you what's new. So this is obviously the bar and riser and gauge setup that came off of the stock 2022 Lowrider S, and the gauge housing is what's new and different. So. We've got the back taken off here, so this is just gonna pop out of here, and all this is gonna go in our to-go box. And we have to figure out what to do with this gauge, but fortunately, Krauss has come up with a gauge housing for the 2022 Lowrider S model. And obviously, this is gonna go in here. We're just gonna have to run the wires through the back, which is gonna involve, uh, we're gonna wind up lengthening this harness anyway. I don't know if this plug will fit through. It actually does. Um, so I can kind of show you what that's going to look like. So, pop that in there, and there you go. So this then has the same bottom mount as Krause's very familiar road glide setup, and just like the road glide setup, you can mount it however you want. We're going to be using the T-bar clamp that's going to go onto the riser, and you can also do the Krause riser top mount. There's also a stock Harley uh, riser adapter as well for these. Um, we're doing a set of 10 inch isolated kickback risers. These should look really familiar. We've done these, I don't know how many times. And we're pairing that with, you guessed it, a uh, Flymoto one and one eighth inch bar. These are absolutely my favorite handlebar there is. Um, so I'm always glad when somebody wants to run one of these on their bike. So. What we're gonna do now is get the wiring all run through here, uh, but before that, we've gotta extend all of our wiring harnesses. Um, we're gonna add, I think for this setup, probably about four inches to all the wiring. Um, it's kind of a lot on these uh, um, 
soft tail and dyno models because you've got the turn signals up high. So in addition to your switch controls on both sides, your throttle by wire control, obviously now we've got the gauge to do, you also have the turn signal uh, harness on each side as well. So it's an additional six wires that we've got to extend. Um, you know, you could maybe try and get away with doing this, you know, and say, hey, maybe there's enough slack in those, in those wires, I'm gonna try and do it without extending it. Um, I don't recommend it. You really wanna have a nice amount of slack in those wires. You don't wanna be pulling on those wires when you're at full lock on either side. Um, just risk damaging something. So I'm gonna get started with that. We're gonna wire it up. I'll show it to you once we get it all uh, wired in together and we'll get it back on the bike. All right, so a little bit of time later after doing a whole bunch of soldering and a whole bunch of extending of wiring harnesses, we've got our bars wired up with the switches and turn signals and our gauge in the new uh, bracket with the wires extended there as well. So like I said before, it's a lot of wiring. It's not hard. Um, you can obviously, you know, solder these the way we did it. You just sort of buy universal extensions and cut them to the length you want and put them on. Um, you can buy plug and play ones that are, you know, come in a predetermined length or the female end that plugs into the end of the OE wires and then a male end on the other side. Those are super fast, but the problem is you are going to half fold. Number one, you got to get the length right, so that's first. But second, um, those plugs are probably going to be out there somewhere. You know, if you're doing a bagger where everything's inside the fairing, no big deal. And also with the baggers, you can actually unplug the, the wiring harness itself from in here and just buy longer ones. So that's super easy and a thing we do all the time. But on the bikes without fairings, you really have to be careful about, you know, what that wiring harness looks like because you're gonna see it, um, you know, as it makes its way down either through the risers or, or, you know, inside the risers and then kind of around behind the headlight and it goes into the side of the frame. Um, you don't want a whole bunch of plastic connectors there. You just want, you know, nice black, you know, factory looking wire loop. So in any event, um, I'm gonna go ahead and get these bolted on. Um, as you can see, the risers there are uh, already in place and just waiting. Um, just a little tip on these, it's the same with the road glides. The bracket for this has a, uh, a hole here for the wires to run through. Hopefully you can see that. Um, so what you wanna do is obviously before you put this on and run all these wires and run them through the top triple tree, you wanna make sure this is in place so you can run the wires through this as well. It keeps them nice and neat. So in any event, that's what we're gonna go ahead and do and uh, we'll check back in and reposition and uh, we'll show you how this starts to look once we get it mocked up. So here we are with our bars and risers engaged just about back in their final resting place. So obviously we got a few more details that we got to do here. The brakes aren't bled, they're hooked up though. Got to do our clutch adjustment, turn signals uh, have to get hooked back up with our new mirrors, but pretty much this is how it's going to look. Um, I think this Krauss gauge bracket is awesome. Um, it really, really works well being able to move it up and down and then have the sort of pivoting axes with that three inch extension block really allows you to put this wherever you want. Now, I've said this before on the road glides and I'll say it again here, the angle you're looking at this from the camera, I'm sure it looks like the gauge is blocked by the risers. It is not. You're not looking at it from the angle where the rider would be sitting. You have to remember that when you're on the bike, your head is all the way up here and you're looking down this way. Okay, so your line of sight is this way towards the road. Your eyes are here, the road's down here, right? So when you're looking over this, you see this gauge. There's actually about maybe a half an inch of daylight between the bottom of the gauge and the riser, uh, the way it's set right now. So there's about another inch or so that this could move up if needed, although I don't know why. You could even move it further down and tuck it further back. So I'll try to, once this is all done, give you a perspective showing what this looks like from where you're sitting on the bike because I keep getting comments every time, like, oh, the gauge is blocked by the riser. It's not. Um, for the moment, you're gonna have to take my word for it, but hopefully I can show you once we have it done. So everything else we talked about, um, we've got one finger levers on here, um, super common for us. Uh, Heartluck ODI grips on here. This is the gunmetal version to match the bike. Um, otherwise, you know, basically we've talked about everything else, bars, risers, and gauge. So we ran our wiring, we got all that done. Um, I'm gonna keep trucking along here, probably put these mirrors on so they get these turn signals back up where they're supposed to be. Um, typically, I like to get rid of these big bullet turn signals. Customer wanted to do uh, custom dynamics inserts, um, so we're gonna leave them in place. Um, but after we get these bars situated, um, now that the clutch is back hooked up and we've got the side cover back on, we can get our pipe on and we can finish uh, getting this thing ready to go on the dyno. So 
Bear with me just a little bit more. Um, we got a few more things to button up and then we'll have this bike uh, running and we'll get it on the dyno. All right, boys and girls, we've got our Lowrider S 2022 ready to go up on the dyno. We've got uh, everything obviously installed, pipe, air cleaner, everything's ready to go. Got a few little bolt-on parts we've got to deal with after it's tuned, but obviously nothing related to the tune. Um, so yeah, we're ready to roll. Uh, we've got it warmed up, uh, oil level is good, everything was running fine, new cam install went obviously really great. Um, we've got a reasonably close base map uh, from another project we did that we're gonna start with on this bike. So uh, I think this should go pretty quickly and we'll be able to get some results pretty soon. So I'm gonna uh, just get to it and uh, give you a little bit of uh, footage of showing you how this goes and uh, we'll see, we'll see how we do. So we got done with the first uh, quick session we did on the bike, uh, just ran through sort of mid-range RPM stuff, mid-range throttle stuff, uh, just to see kind of how close we were. And as I suspected, we were uh, pretty good. Uh, the bike ran super, super well. Um, so we made some changes. Like I said, we're sort of in this middle section. We did a little bit of blending in some of the other sections. That's our front cylinder. It's our rear cylinder. Um, probably hard to read this from the camera, but I just kind of wanted to give you a little perspective on what we're doing. Um, and then obviously that's, we were looking at changes there. So that's the rear VE table, that's the front VE table. Um, so in any event, we're gonna keep chugging along and uh, I'm gonna load this in. We're gonna run it again and try and get up into the higher RPM stuff. We'll also mess around with some of the low, uh, sorry, higher throttle position stuff. And then we'll get into some of the low RPM stuff up here at the top. Um, and we'll just keep rolling along. Uh, maybe we'll get a little more dyno footage, but uh, probably we'll uh, check back in, show you some full throttle runs so you can see what that looks like. Um, and then uh, we'll get some numbers.
So here's the 2022 Lowrider S, all done on the dyno, back on the ground, with all the last little bits bolted on. So things we were waiting on, uh, we had to put these uh, foot controls back on, got a bunking crash bar on here, threw a little San Diego Customs bar bag on, T-Sport fairing is on, I'm sorry, that's a Memphis Shades Road Warrior, not a T-Sport. Um, got a small uh, low profile tail light from Moons on there. So hopefully you can sort of see the big picture here. Um, obviously this was mostly about the two major things we did. Uh, the bar and riser setup, along with kind of everything else we did here, grips, one finger levers, Arlen Ness mirrors, lines from Magnum. Uh, that was sort of part one. The other part was obviously engine related. So we did an SNS 475 cam, HPI, two in one stainless pipe, and a uh, air cleaner from Trask. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, throw the dyno sheet up on the screen now, so you should be seeing that. And uh, I don't have it in front of me, so I might get the numbers not quite right, but um, this bike made really, really respectable numbers for uh, a cam, a pipe, and an air cleaner. So obviously what you're seeing is a really, really good result for a comparatively small investment compared to what we used to have to do on the twin cams to get big numbers like that. So. Obviously you got a little bit of a torque dip there early on, that's pretty indicative to the 475. Uh, but as you can see, it's still making big torque numbers even in that dip, so it's really not a big deal. And honestly, um, you know, where you're riding in that sort of three to 4,000 RPM range is obviously where this, this cam shines the best. So that torque number at 130 is awesome. I wouldn't want to do anything else there. Um, you know, if you're trying to get that horsepower number up, uh, a throttle body is probably what this bike needs next. Looking at the numbers on the dyno, manifold pressure was not quite what you want. Um, basically showing that the engine was looking for more air, getting a bigger throttle body on there would do that. So um, if this customer was looking for more horsepower up at the top than what this is doing with this same cam, uh, we can do that, give it a little bit more air and add a little more fuel and it'll make some more horsepower. But as a rider for the street, uh, I think this is pretty, pretty killer. Uh, for what we did here. So all that said, that's gonna do it. This is the bike and uh, this is a 2022 Lowrider S. And so until then, uh, we'll see you next time, ride safe.